Hello, everyone. Yo. Welcome to our timeout. I'm your host, Trey Avant, with my co-host, my brother, Noah Avant. This is a two-man webcast that discusses sports and entertainment. Before we begin, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the Book or Tone Tribune on all social media platforms. We're at Book or Tribune on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also follow the show on Instagram at the underscore timeout7. Hello. It's time for a timeout. But before we get into the NFL, I have an announcement to make. Today is a very special day in timeout history. Today was the birth of a king. November 11th, the birth of a king. Today is Noah's birthday. Happy birthday, Noah. Appreciate it, bro. Uh, fun fact, 111 is actually an angel number. So... I don't know exactly what that means, but for somebody for sure told me that was the angel number, it was good. So, mm-hmm. hey, but, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, 23, the 23. Jordan Braun year. You know, I yeah, just put my hyphen in there because. Why not? You're getting, you're getting up there, no way. You're getting up there. You're almost in your mid 20s. I'm in my mid 20s, like what, next year? You're gonna be an independent. Cause once you turn 24, you know, I think that's like the last year that you could be dependent, I think. Yeah, it's just like, I, it's weird. Cause I really feel like I've been a, I haven't really been independent this long. Mm-hmm. But like now I'm planning on like getting insurance and a place, mm-hmm. I'm about to graduate next year. So it's just like, it's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of, a lot of change in this new chapter of 23, but I'm excited for it. Yeah, as you should, as you should. Change change can be good. It can be good. We're gonna see how it is. We're gonna we're gonna mm-hmm. let it ride. <laughs> we're gonna let it ride. So let's get into some football. Big dolphin. How about them dolphins? They they held them off. They held off Kyler. Yeah, the Cardinals are a really good team, but they were able. I mean, Kyler still did his thing. Kyler was balling. Oh, but dumb. but everybody else, you know, it was kind of you know DeAndre Hopkins didn't play that good. You know, Xavier Howard held him on lockdown. That's that's what we wanted to do. I mean, Christian Kirk, Christian Kirk, my bad. He played really good. Yeah, I mean, he he, he did burn Byron Jones pretty bad on that one touchdown. Yeah. But other than that, the Dolphins played good on defense. Emmanuel Ogba did amazing. It's like once you put on that 91 for the Dolphins, mm-hmm. you, you immediately become like a beast. Like Cameron Wake had 91. Emmanuel Ogba has 91. It's like once you put on that 91, you become a monster. Shaq All Lawson. Right. Shaq Lawson had the fumble return for a touchdown. Yeah, you know, it was like his second one, like his second touchdown on the year. No, nah, it's his first. It's his first. Cause I could have sworn he had a fumble recovery. Oh, unless that was somebody else last week. That was somebody. That was, that was Van Ginkle. Van Ginkle returned it for a touchdown. But Emmanuel Ogbo forced both of those fumbles. He's a beast. Yep. And then, as you know, Tua, he played amazing. You know, um, what's his name? Preston Williams. He played pretty good before he got hurt. Yeah, I see the day that the Dolphins could put him on reserves. Yeah, yeah, but he'll be back in about three weeks. So, I mean, he's not out for the season or whatnot. Um, we should be getting Gaskin back pretty soon as well. Parker played good, you know. So, I mean, I already didn't get in there to play all that well. But, I mean, we didn't have Gaskin, so what do you expect? I mean, we to be honest, Gaskin is really not like, – like we said before, he's not a starting running back. He is a third down back. Like, when we get an official starting running back, actual stud – Mm-hmm. And we have him as a third down back. Oh man, mm-hmm. like that, that, that. That's the thing with the Dolphins. Like the Miami Dolphins really has a lot of pieces. They just need a few more for them to, well, a few more mm-hmm. compatible pieces that'll make it work. Because they've had pieces in the past. It's just they never had compatible pieces to actually make them as a team better as a team. Where they improved individually at a position, they didn't improve. It didn't help that. That improvement did not help the overall team or the overall defense or offense. So, but um, this I think again that's that shocked me this week the most was the Bills and the Seahawks game. Like um, we actually didn't have that game here, so I really was just watching uh most of the the recaps of everything. 
And it's just like, how do you lose to the Bills? Like, the Bills are a good team, but you have DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett with, with Russell Wilson. Mm-hmm. How does that work? Like, how, do you, how do you feel about that? Well, I mean, the Bills are a really good team. You know, they're number one in the uh, AFC East. You know, Josh Allen, he's that guy. Like, he's proved this year. I was skeptical about Josh Allen. And then this year, he proved he's a legit quarterback. As as you can tell, he's beat, he's beating some legit teams. The Seahawks are a legit team. Russell Wilson is a legit quarterback. And he outdoored Russell Wilson, who also played pretty good. But Josh Allen was just better. Yeah. But the Bills, the Bills, I think the Bills might be maybe the biggest threat to the Chiefs. Like, I mean, most people probably say the Steelers because the Steelers are undefeated. But in the AFC, the way the Bills are playing right now, I think the Bills might be the biggest threat to the Chiefs. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the Seahawks issue for them is starting to be their defense. Their defense is really starting to show like it's their Achilles heel. Mm-hmm. Like, where, where, that, where the Bills had your Davies White making plays on defense – the Seahawks did not have that. Did not have such, and it's crazy because you got Jamal Adams, you have um, Bobby Wagner. Your DBs is suspect, and I feel like that's why why most of the issues happened the way it did. But they have the defense to be good. Like that 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 Bills deep that Bills offense should have not had the game that they had. But it's interesting to see that that like you said, Josh Allen, he's been balling. You gotta get that man his credit. Diggs, you gotta get that man his credit. You gotta give uh they have uh what's what's the running back now? Um uh, Moss. Yeah. They got Moss and, um, and, uh, Singletary and Zach Moss. Yeah, like those guys, those two those two those two backs are great. Mm-hmm. Mm, so. I mean, I, I had to cut Singletary because yeah. Singletary hasn't been playing very good in fantasy. So Zach Moss has been getting more like the touches lately, you know. So there's no reason for me to have Singletary any good. Yeah, no. I think he had like two carries for one yard last game. I think they're gonna end up probably running with Moss in the long term. Yeah, probably go with Moss and use Singletary maybe like a third down back probably. Yeah, I mean that's not a bad third down back, especially when you got a young guy coming up doing all of this. He's showing the most potential. Might as well let him run the rock. Yeah. Then he had to, then they're like the the the, the Chiefs. The, you mentioned the Chiefs earlier. The Chiefs really scared me against the against Carolina. When they played against the Panthers, it was really one of those things. Like, all right, let's let's pick it up. Now, I know you guys are undefeated with uh, uh, deficits coming back from deficits and whatnot, but at the same time, it's like. You gotta, you gotta play better. You cannot allow yourself to have that much of a deficit. Mm-hmm. You know, even this is fourteen zero. You don't give bums hope because that's how you lose. That's how you get upset. And if they go to the playoffs and they are seeing the the Bills and they let them get that type of lead on them, they might be in trouble, huh? Possibly. I mean, I'm not saying Pat Mahomes couldn't dig them out of that hole because Pat Mahomes is a very talented quarterback. They have a very talented offense, Tariq Hill, Sammy Watkins, and all these other guys. But I'm not doing that. I like to dominate the whole game. I don't like to give people hope. I like to let's nip this in the bud and let the game be boring. I'd rather have a if I'm a coach, I'm gonna watch a boring game. I don't want to watch a good game. Now, Teddy Bridgewater, he played pretty good. He played really good. Teddy played amazing, but at the same time, Teddy shouldn't. Teddy Bridgewater shouldn't have had the game he had against this team. If this team is gonna be a Super Bowl team, mm-hmm. we're even never in our and this his in the show's history talked about the Panthers as a Super Bowl team this year. Like that's not even. I don't think that come, that that thought has even come up in our heads as the, the Panthers being in the same breath as the uh, Chiefs. So I don't understand why they would even let that happen. Like I think the Chiefs and probably the Bucks this this week let me down the most. But yeah, Seattle let me down. But 
those two teams, maybe more so to like the Chiefs than the Bucks, um, than the Chiefs than the Bucks, just because of the Panthers. Mm-hmm. And that that was just, mm-mm. I need the Chiefs to step up next week. Well, the week after next, I have to, they have a bye this week. Yeah, yeah. The mm-hmm. Steelers, Steelers are still undefeated. They just beat the Cowboys. Barely. Beat barely. The Cowboys. Barely. They barely beat the Cowboys. Do you think like like with them struggling against the Cowboys? And I don't think they have a bye week this week. And I think Big Ben does have coronavirus. Mm-hmm. But he should be he should be back, you know, before the game. Are you sure? Because I read an article that they said in where he would be questionable for the game on Sunday. He, he probably is questionable, but, but I think I believe I read somewhere that said in the NFL the COVID list is like five days, and he tested COVID I think on Monday, so he should be back for. Force. He should be back on Sunday. Yeah, but if he has COVID and he's sick, that's probably why the issue why everybody keeps getting COVID. Yeah, you yeah, you gotta have that thing for at least two weeks. You gotta you gotta quarantine for two weeks. Mm-hmm. But I think every, every, team, huh? every team has like, every team has like different guidelines, I believe. Yeah, it makes sense, but still, I mean, he's already just about hurt last week. He was grabbing his knee. Yeah, he had a great game. I give him. He did play very well, mm-hmm. but he's already. Oh, my arm hurts. My knee hurts. My leg hurts. Mm-hmm. And it's not something you really want to do right now. Mm-hmm. It's too early in the season for all of that. Yeah, but I mean, they're undefeated, you know? They are undefeated. I mean, I, I don't know what the rest of their schedule looks like, but I mean, they might not lose for a while, depending on the rest of their schedule. They probably won't lose until they, lose until they face the Chiefs. The Chiefs are going to be one of the beat them. Do they play the Chiefs in the regular season? I believe so. If they do, the Chiefs are. If they do, if they do the Chiefs are going to beat them. Sure. The Chiefs are going to wipe the floor. With them. Like, it's not going to be. A, I really don't fight that game. Would be the game would be good, but you know, beat beat the living breaks off of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they got the Jags this week. Okay, that's a win. Right. They got the Ravens next week. Mm, question. And, they're not beating them. They're not beating them twice, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's very questionable. Lamar Lamar is not going to let them lose twice. Mm-hmm. Especially when they were that close last time. It was just a pass in the end zone away. Mm-hmm. And then they got the the the, the football team. I was called them the Redskins. The football team. Yeah, so when. Bills. Mm, that's questionable. What? The Bills and them? Yeah, the Bills might beat them. Right. And then after that, it's pretty much going to be three and zero. They have probably one of the easier, com- easier uh, schedules towards the end of the season because they have the Bills, the Bengals, the Colts, and then the Browns. Okay, yeah. I really don't see them losing the last three. I mean, they might lose to the uh, to the Colts, maybe, maybe the Browns, but who knows? It's the end of the yeah. season. At the end of the season, you know, teams start getting sloppy and stuff like that. May only way I see them losing is if Ben gets hurt. Ben gets hurt, or Claypool or Juju somehow or another just falls off the face of the earth. Mm-hmm. But they're definitely not, they're definitely not beating that. the Bills. They're definitely not beating the Bills or the Ravens. Who? They're definitely not beating the Bills or the Ravens. Um, the Bills, the Bills, maybe, but the Ravens. They, they probably will beat the Bills, but they losing to the Ravens. I think they'll beat the. I think they could beat the the Bills. I mean, I mean, it, it, I don't know. It really depends. Like, it depends on the location of the game, you know, yeah. the weather, because, you know, it's getting later in the year, you know, could be snowing and stuff like that. You know, they're they, from Pittsburgh. So, I mean, like, they're getting snow just like New York, upstate New York good. Yeah. Or Buffalo, New York good. But, you know, Big Ben, like you say, he's getting older. Arm. Yeah. Well, I'm not a fan of Ben as, as we've. As we've well no documented on this show, so I mean, we'll see. <clears throat> but I don't the, believe him. I don't think he can make it through the season. Mm-hmm. Speaking of people not making it through the season, Tom Brady put up a stinker against the Saints. Mm. But that's the Saints, though. But it's Tom Brady, though. He put up three points. Three. Okay. Yeah, points. That's, that's unacceptable. But I, I say this. I say that to say this, though. Him and Drew Brees are fighting for like the uh, I think it's like touchdowns, touchdowns and yards, touchdowns and yards. It's like they're neck and neck. Like every game, it changes. 
because Tom Brady can go off for however many he missed off last week. When he plays Carolina, he could very well get that and pass. Because Carolina defense is not going to stop Antonio Brown. They're not going to stop uh, um, Godwin or Evans. So, I mean, like, what you going to do? Yeah, I mean, it's most likely going to be a win. But as you can see, as you can tell, the Panthers are a good team. They the Panthers hard. are a very good team. And I feel like last week's game hard. might actually give them some type of push. But I don't feel like Tom Brady is just going to sit up here and lose. He's not, you know, he might lose to the Saints because you can you can see that. I can understand that loss. Because that de- the, the Saints defense was really getting graphic with Tom. Yeah, they're Cam legit. Jordan was having his way. Not, yeah, Cam Jordan. Yeah, Cam Jordan was having his way. So it's like you don't want to. You know, you you can see that. Can you name somebody on the Panthers D line? No. How about a linebacker outside of Luke Keekley? That Luke actually played retired. Luke Keekley retired. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. They had Jerome McCoy, but he got he got hurt. I think they cut him. So. I don't know. It's just their offense. Just the Panthers' offense is what keeps them in the game. Yeah. And C Mac's not playing this week. Yeah, he's not playing. So that's over for them. They're not beating the Bucks. Yeah. But they'll probably put up a decent fight, though. We'll see. Your offense is gone. Mm-hmm. So this is like more of what it was like before week for less. Mm-hmm. But Mike Davis is a good replacement. He's a solid replacement. Yeah. But you're playing the Buccaneers. This is one of the best teams in the league. They are one of the best teams in the league, but they look get exposed. But we'll see. They did look get exposed. But we'll see what happens. You know, now they're playing a weaker team. You know, they could probably incorporate a uh, A B in there a little bit more. You know, they ain't really go through too much against the Saints because the Saints watching him. So, you know, with a weaker defense, they might be able to do a little bit more. Especially, especially now that the Buccaneers are going to use Leonard Fournette a lot more than they use Ronald Jones now, because it's kind of it's been proven now that Leonard Fournette is a better player than Ronald Jones. So now they got their running back, but they're definitely going to lean on a lot more. So their offense is starting to slowly get solidified. But when the pl- to come playoff time, I did say the Buccaneers are going to face the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. I don't really think so anymore, because the Saints beat them down. <sighs> But I also don't want to like this. It it's this just one game. It's just one game off of one game. Yeah, it's now, just- if they keep playing like bums, maybe they mess around, lose to Carolina. Okay, I might have to say, okay, let's let's really look at this. Maybe I overlook something. But I don't see them losing to the Panthers, and I'm not sure their regular season like the rest of their schedule. But I know Tom Brady doesn't like losing. That's not what he was made him Tom Brady. You know that does, that did not make him Waffle House famous. You know that he 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 got famous because he became Waffle House famous because he could throw that ball and he could put the ball in his zone. He became and he was he's the man. He got a plaque. He did. And he had to keep doing what he doing. He got better receivers. So it's like I really feel like the pressure's really on him because you have a better receiver, a tremendously better receiving core than what you had last year. Like you got to make it happen, T. You know what I'm saying? That's my two cents on Tom Brady. I wanted to ask you a question. Um, the NFL is thinking about expanding their playoffs. So kind of like eight teams in AFC, eight teams in the NFC. So it's kind of like the NBA playoffs. Like, what do you think about that? I mean, I thought that'd be cool. You do like the first, like the top eight of the NFC, top eight of the AFC. That'd be cool. But it's just like at the same time, I don't feel like now is the time to expand it. I feel like right now we just got a lot going on with the coronavirus. We don't need to be talking about expanding anything later on down the road this year. We just need to work on finishing this season and planning for next season so we don't have as many coronavirus uh, um, outbreaks at these, facil- at these facilities. And we're actually making the proper steps. That's what I would That's what I, That's what what I. I would do. Yeah, I, it, it, it said – they were thinking about that just in case at the end of the season they would have to cancel some games, you know, to the, you know, because they can't keep pushing stuff back. So they were thinking like just they had to cancel some games, you know, add some extra games, but they'd be playoff games. Yeah, I think that would be. A, I think the idea would be good, like beneficial for the Dolphins. 
can just definitely, yeah. You know, especially you know, if the Dolphins, you know, slack off towards the end of the season, they might still have a chance to get into the playoffs. Especially since I don't really think the Dolphins are going to catch the um the Bills for first place in the AFC East. They're not. So the Dolphins are most likely not going to win the division, but they can still get the wild card. You know. Yeah, I mean, I can see them. I mean, I definitely do see the Miami Dolphins in the wild card this year. Mm-hmm. We are a wild card team. If we beat the Rams one week, and that was supposed to be a game we lost. We 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 said it on the show we we could pretty much very much lose that game. We won. We beat the Cardinals last week. Who do we play this week? The uh, Chargers. Play the Chargers. I mean, if we beat the Chargers. I don't really see us losing many more games after that. We're gonna lose to the Chiefs probably. I do I think we do see the Chiefs. Yes, we definitely see the Chiefs. We see the Chiefs. We're gonna beat the Patriots. Mm-hmm. We got Raiders after that. I think we have Bills again. I think we have Bills again. I'm not quite sure. I don't think we'll probably we'll lose to the Bills. Well, we might lose to the Bills. I don't even know if we if I can really say we'll lose to them. Like this Miami team is really a dynamic squad. Yeah, I've seen, um, I believe it was Max Kellerman said, I think it was Max Kellerman and Stephen A said, it's very possible that the offense can win seven straight games. I mean, because like, like, we, like we both said, you know, the last time they lost was against the Seahawks. And that was October 4th. We beat the Niners, Jets, Rams, Cardinals, facing the Chargers, then the Broncos, and the Jets, and the Bengals. Oh. And, then, and then December 13th, we both against the Chiefs, which is most likely a loss. But yeah, we're not losing that. to the, we're not losing to the Jets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got we got Patriots and we got Raiders, which are both two winnable games. Very winnable games. And then we end the season against the Bills. And that can go either way. That can go either way. It's on the road, but like I said, it's the end. It's the end of the season. The Bills are, are probably going to have their spot locked up anyway. So, not like they're going to play Josh Allen. Oh no, that's true. It's not like they're going to have to find Diggs. And the Dolphins are still going to be fighting for a playoff spot. The Dolphins could beat the Bills. Perhaps. That, that, hey, I, that, that's not like it'll work. It really do. Because, I mean, the Bills are expected to make the playoffs. And, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're not playing. They're, playing not. Yet. they're playing, playing a starting quarterback. I'm not playing none of my good players. But there's no point in doing it in the last game of the season. No, the Ravens started RG3 last year, right? Their last regular season game. The only way I can see Josh Allen and all the starters in the Bills playing week 17 is if the Dolphins are on them in the standings. Like, if the Dolphins are really close to them in the standings, then they'll probably play them just so they, you know, win the division. Yeah. But if the Dolphins are a little bit behind them and have no chance of winning the division, then, you know, they're going to sit everybody out. I do. I do. But, um... Ozzie. I have a question. I wanted to know because the NFL introduced that if teams hire minority players, yeah, I mean, they you know, they can get like a third round draft pick. Mm-hmm. You know, or if teams develop minority players, I mean, no minority coaches and GMs, and they get hired by another team or they get hired by that same team. They can get third round draft pick. Do you think that's beneficial, or do you think that the NFL is kind of like bribing teams, you know, for diversity reasons? The thing with that, the thing with that is this: while it is a very good thing to do. And there are very qualified black candidates out there. I do feel like this, in a sense, is like bribing. Mm -hmm. But, and I mean but, and I mean this is the biggest but out there I could throw out here. But we know that a lot of black coaches, even players, quarterbacks to be specific, they tend to have a very short lease in the NFL. If you're not winning, unless you're like Mike Tomlin or um, 
Uh, man's from uh from from Flores. Unless you're Flores, you're the, the Chargers coach. Your leash is about this long. They sat Dwayne Haskins down, and he don't have no one to throw the ball to. You know what I'm saying? Like, they gave completely up on this man. So it's just like, I do feel like the NFL is doing the right thing in a sense. But at the same time, I can see the, the in a sense of like where you're we're bribing people to do this. Like the third round draft pick is really it's a really high pick. It's a high pick in it, but it's not it's not solving anything. Like yeah. you could have a black coach, but you could have an owner like Ronald, like uh Donald Sterling was. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you can you can have these black these great black coaches, but if you don't have any black ownership in the league, what is the coaches gonna do? Mm-hmm. Like a coach is my one is is nothing compared to a, a a a general manager or an owner. Like the fact that you have a, a um your owners have a whole group and they have to vote on whether they you can sell your team to another person is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Because I remember when Colin Kaepernick, Colin Kaepernick, P Diddy, and Steph Curry went to buy the Panthers. That the Panthers owner didn't want to sell it to him. You know, they say, no, nah, we got to have a group vote. It's got to be all of this red tape. When the true the true issue is we don't have black owners in the NFL. That's what we need. We shouldn't be pushing for just coaches. We should be pushing for owners. Mm-hmm. But I believe we do have a commercial, Trey. Yes, we do. You are watching Time Out with the Avant Bros. If you enjoyed the show, please click the share button to share the stream with all your friends. Also, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the Boca Raton Tribune on all social media platforms. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just look for at Boca Tribune. You can also follow the show on Instagram at the underscore timeout7. See you soon. back everyone week 10 of the college football season has passed and here are some of the results fau beat western kentucky byu beat boise state miami beat nc state notre dame beat clemson ohio state beat rutgers florida beat georgia cincinnati beat houston and texas a&m beat south carolina noah what are your thoughts on this week's games the miami game was rather close yes it was it definitely was but D.R. King pulled it through. I really like him. I really think he's going to be good. I like him. You think he's going to be good in the NFL? I think so. I feel like I feel like him, guys like him and Kyler Murray are going to usher in a new era of quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Quarterbacks that are maybe under a couple inches of six foot. More guys like Drew Brees and Russ. You know, and it, it's it's good to see. It really mm-hmm. truly is good to see because a lot of people. They think these quarterbacks, they want these big, tall guys like Big Ben, Cam Newton. And while that's very good, or even Lamar Jackson, but if they can't move like Lamar or Pat Mahomes, they're a liability in this league. You got these linemen that are fast. Like, they move. They're not slow, fat, they're not big, fat guys anymore. These Santa Claus like dudes in, in shoulder pads and helmets, that's not, a, that's not a thing anymore. Like, you got guys that really, they'll run a 4 9 40. They'll catch you. They're, they're, they will hawk you down in a race. So it's like you got it. You can't have these big clunky guys in the back in the quarterback spot just because they're tall and they can see over their linemen. 
You need a guy that's gonna roll out that pocket like Russ. Look around. And if he don't see nothing, he can, you know, see you later. Tua, another guy. Look around the pocket. I'll see you later. The the league, the, the college football, college football is is showing people like this is the era of mobile quarterbacks. You gotta at least be able to do something. Even Trevor Lawrence can get out of the pocket and run. Mm-hmm. And he's probably one of the better quarterbacks in the and he's probably the best quarterback in the um, this year's draft. Now, I may think Justin Fields is better, in my opinion, because he rushes the ball better. He can run the ball better. But as an actual quarterback doing what quarterbacks do, I had to get at Trevor Lawrence. Mm-hmm. But, speaking um, of Trevor Lawrence. Huh? But speaking of Trevor Lawrence, his team, without him, without him, lost to Notre Dame. I mean, Notre Dame is a really good team, though, number four in the nation. And they don't have their number one quarterback. Exactly, Clemson. I mean, that shows that show goes to show you how important Trevor Lawrence is to Clemson. Clemson did score forty points, you know, but without their quarterback, they fell in Notre Dame, which you and me predicted. Yeah, that Clemson was going to lose. But you also got to understand, like, that's a. If I'm the Jets, my mouth is watering mm-hmm. looking at that. Like looking at that score, my mouth is watering. Cause I know for a fact now, yeah, your team is good, but you make them just that much better to win those games, to win those close games. Mm-hmm. If I'm the Jets, that's what I want. I'm just looking at like, man, I hope you declare. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, if I'm Trevor Lawrence and I know I don't want to start my career with the Jets, this is probably not the best thing in the world to see. Because mm-hmm. the Jets are absolutely terrible. It's it's, it's a, it really is a shame that the fact that you got guys really like that normally would be considered number one pick. The number one pick is like, yeah, I'm definitely going. And they're like, oh, you know, I might go back to school for another year. I really want to get my finish my degree in in physical education. So um, I really just I don't know. I just always really wanted that PE degree, and I just just making a complete stuff out of their butt. Just so that way they don't have to go to the NFL and play for them bums. Mm-hmm. Like hey, it's it's not something. That well, I would... What if the Jets get the first pick next year too? That's what I'm saying. Then it's like, really I... I mean, he ain't really got a choice at that point. Unless he could just be like, I'm not playing for the Jets because that's what some players do. You know, back in the day, you know, I think Steve Francis got drafted with the Grizzlies, Vancouver Grizzlies, and he was like, I'm not playing for the Grizzlies. And they traded him immediately. Why is traded Kobe? I mean, I mean, you could demand a trade, you know? Yeah, but it's just like, if you're, if you're a GM and you have a, and you see a player like this and he's, I, I don't want to play here. And you, you haven't even laced up your cleats yet. You ain't never even stepped on the NFL field yet, for real. Mm-hmm. And you talking about you want to trade? I don't know. It, it, it it's not a good look. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, who are they gonna trade? Like who who are they gonna give up? Why am I like? Would you? Are you really gonna trade like an asset, a big, a very important asset for Trevor Lawrence? Mm-hmm. Like would you? I mean, depends, but probably not. It depends on how badly you need a quarterback because no player. Yeah. No player is a sure thing. Like you see them in college, but oh, they're amazing. But he gets to the NFL. Right they Baker get to the, they get to the NFL and they fall apart, or they get to the NBA. You know, they fall apart. You can't really you can't really predict that. You know, injuries happen, or sometimes they're just not good enough. You know. Yeah. You know, and I was, I was I was talking to this guy working about it today. I was like, listen, when you are in high school. If you're about 6'1 to 6'4, slightly a little bit more athletic than your peers, and have the ability to make some pretty good plays, you're already better than most of the people you're going to see. You're probably end up going to go D2, maybe D1. If your grades are bad or you get in a little bit of trouble, you might go to a JUCO. But you, you, you're going to definitely go to the next level to play football. But once you get to this level where they're at now, it 
everybody was demanded their high school. Mm-hmm. Every running back rushed for a thousand yards. Mm-hmm. Every quarterback threw for a thousand yards. Every receiver had ten or however many, whatever the the good a good status for receivers. I don't keep up with receivers. I never play receiver. Never play DB. Don't know about none of that stuff. Or I know about interceptions and whatnot. Like everybody had a hundred tackles in a in a like a, in a in a in a, in a, um, in a season. Like everybody's had these crazy like stats that everybody strives for. Everybody at that school at your school was there. They've done it or they were close to. So once you get to that level, you it really it shows you. That's like that's the dynamics of like that's what that's what makes like pro professional sports so so appealing. What makes it so cool is the fact that these guys are really like that. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on um Florida upsetting Georgia? Was not expecting that. I didn't see that game. I didn't that, that game didn't I don't think that game came on up here. So Florida, Florida spanked them. 44 28. Like, and it's crazy because we had a we got a North Carolina native at Georgia. He went to Laurenberry. I went to I played, went to Pembroke with one of his former teammates. And it guys a beast, but it's like Florida came out like Florida came out with some with some anger and frustration. Did you but did you get a chance to catch a game or catch any of the games other than highlights? All I saw was dollars. A little bit of the highlights. Um, I just know now that uh, Georgia is really missing Jamie Newman. They need a quarterback. Ever since Jamie Newman opted out, because you know he transferred from Wake Forest to them as a graduate mm-hmm. transfer, I believe. Supposed to play for them. He was going to be a, a first round draft pick, but you know he decided to opt out of the season. You know COVID reasons. You know just you know he knows he's going to be a first round pick. Most anyways, you know first round, second rounder. So what's the point of playing? Um. But quarterbacks like their weakest position by far. They don't. They don't really have a good quarterback. Their running backs are good. Receivers are good. Defense is good. Offensive line is good. But if you don't have a quarterback, that's not you have. A, you have a. You have a ceiling. Yeah. Like, if you don't have a quarterback, you have a ceiling. Clemson doesn't have a ceiling because they have Trevor Lawrence. Ohio right. State doesn't have a ceiling because they have Justin Fields. Right. You have a quarterback. You have no ceiling. I'm sorry. If you, yeah. If you have a quarterback, you have no ceiling. They don't have a quarterback, so what the, can what they can do is limited. Yeah, I mean the head of the snake, like the quarterback is the head of the snake. Like your quarterback is not good. <laughs> like good luck. I know you're not gonna pass the ball much. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. Probably mm-hmm. might load the box a lot, a lot more than I normally would. Mm-hmm. And we would know you're gonna run the right the middle, run right to the outside. You might have a tackle pull here and there on an outside handoff or a toss. Mm-hmm. You might run a trick play. You might throw a quick little dunk pass. But you're going to be doing a lot of this. Exactly. <laughs> Speaking of quarterbacks, Kyle Trask, the quarterback for Florida, played amazing. He's expected to be about a, a mid-round draft pick. You know, he's a very good quarterback. Yeah, and I mean, and these games like this are definitely helping his uh helping his case. It's gonna, always gonna help his draft stock. Mm-hmm. He's in that class with uh with Mac Jones, the quarterback from Alabama, and with uh with Zach Wilson, the quarterback from BYU. You know that secondary class, you know, below Trey Lance, Justin Fields, and Trevor Lawrence. You know, so. But speaking of Justin Fields, your boy, Ohio State beat Rutgers forty nine twenty seven. I don't know what they're – they were number three when they beat Rutgers, but ever since Clemson lost, they might be number two. I know Alabama's number one right now. Yeah. So Ohio State is most likely number two. But I know – I think Clemson's number four right now. I think so, too. Bama. Bama has been – Bama's going to be good. I really feel like Bama might mess around and win again this year. I think this is going to be the year they go to – but they go back and reclaim their – the throne that Clemson has been occupying for the last couple of years. I mean, they don't have a lot of competition. I mean, Florida, Florida and Georgia are probably the biggest competition, especially Florida. Yeah, because um, LSU's gone. LSU's out the picture now. Yeah, LSU is completely out the picture now. So, 
Mm. I mean, Texas A&M is number seven in the nation. They're really good. I mean, the SEC is the SEC is a uh, it's tough every year. It's, it's tough every year. But but I mean, Alabama will most likely make it to the national championship game. And will most likely fight. I mean, not fight. I most likely go up against Clemson if Clemson can get back into the top four. We're gonna have to see on that one. I don't know. But I mean, I think they will because you know Trevor Lawrence is gonna be back next game. You know. Yeah. But um, I just hope nobody gets cooked again. Texas A&M cooks cook South Carolina like those new Xboxes are cooking. Speaking of those Xboxes, we're yeah. gonna venture out of bounds with this question, folks. The Xbox Series X came out yesterday. PS Five comes out tomorrow. Noah, what are your thoughts on the latest console war? Well, I had to get back to y'all on the um, on the PS5 because she's in route. Um, but uh, with this Xbox, I think the issue with the Xbox is that they're overheating. They have a lot of vents, and I feel like the vents probably overheat. And I like the PlayStation. PlayStation apparently has two industrial like type fans on the inside to keep the system cool. And the Xbox doesn't. Like, there was a video on Twitter that surfaced, and it was literally smoking at the top. It was like somebody was hotboxing their Xbox. Like it just smoked, just steaming out the absolute top. And I'm like, you, you are you serious? Like people really were really paying money for this stuff. And it makes you wonder, like, do you think they may have like rushed through production just so that way they can get a bunch made? Because you know, coronavirus probably has shut down a lot of. Building, I set out a lot of factories like PlayStation shut down, Xbox had shut down. I remember my PlayStation controller broke during the quarantine, and I was trying to go get a PlayStation controller. They said, Yeah, we don't have any more. Like the last shipment we got was the last shipment we got, and now we just got to wait whenever they get them, and hopefully we'll get them. You want to order it offline and get it, you'll get it from directly from there. But for the most part, they weren't shipping a lot of stuff, they really weren't doing a lot of like, like, uh. Shipping their their consoles and accessories and whatnot. So if they're not making them, to sh- if they're not shipping them, I imagine they're not making them, or they're making them, they probably had to pause. So I'm definitely I'm definitely curious to see how the PS5 is going to work. I hope it doesn't start smoking. That's not something I want to see for a five hundred dollar video game. Well, I'm. I heard the PS5 has ventilation problems as well. I believe I read somewhere that said that. I think Sony said this themselves. If you get the PS5, make sure it has a lot of space. Yeah. I heard it was in a box one time and it was on. And it, it just it just overheated because it was in a box. But I think that's the case with like probably most consoles or all consoles. You don't want to keep a console in a box. In a in a box and closed. It's it's gonna heat. It's gonna overheat. You know, they already produce a lot of power themselves. And if they ain't got nowhere to release it, it's, it's going to overheat. I mean, phones do the same thing. So Exactly. Like, like right now, I'm trying to plan out, like, where am I even going to put it? Mm-hmm. Where can I, do I want to put it on the second cubby? Do I want to put it at the top? It really is going to give a lot of people a lot of <sighs> things to think about, to, to say the least. I mean, but I do have 2K coming mm-hmm. and all of the main games coming. So expect the game review real soon. I know the holidays coming up. So we'll probably do a review on some interesting holiday things at some point. I believe with the launch of both consoles, both consoles might have some it both both consoles will have some issues. Cause I mean it's they're new consoles. No one really tested them like that. Mm-hmm. You know, they're gonna be out there, a lot of people are gonna be buying them. They're gonna have their problems initially. I believe the Xbox One and PS4 had their problems as well when they first came out. You yeah. know, give it about a year, you know, till next Christmas, and then you know, some improvements will come, and you know, they're gonna be practically flawless. So I'm thinking about next year because the PlayStation Five is like this big. Yes, like, yeah. this is a massive game. Like they. I saw a review on it, and the guy was like, it is exactly as big as it looks. Mm-hmm. Like, the controller, the controller looks like the Xbox One controller. Mm-hmm. Like, it is a very big, bulky game. 
So it's going to be interesting to see next year, next holiday season, so the holiday of 2021, where they have the slim version of the PS5. Because you know they usually come out with the slim about a year or two after, maybe even three years after the original model. Maybe yeah. they'll come out with the slim version because the slim version, I hope to God, is not as massive as this PS5 is now. No, it won't be. It won't be. It'll probably have less processing power because it's going to have less stuff inside of yeah. it. Slimmer. But I mean, it's just going to be like a, you know, it's going to be PS4, but like more, a little bit more powerful P- version of PS4. Definitely. Well, PS4 Pro, I guess. Okay. Spider Man, Miles Morales came out, and I heard it was excellent. Oh, I'm getting it, so I'm gonna find out. She's on the way. <laughs> Gotta have her. My PlayStation died, so I can't play. Mm-hmm. Like Call of Duty comes out the 13th, and thankfully I did pre-order the, the Ultimate Edition, so I was able to get like the free upgrade. Cause man, I, that game is gonna be so good. They said the adaptive controllers is gonna be like if you have a light machine gun, it's gonna be heavy. Like you're gonna feel the resistance in your and your trigger and your on your left on your L two or your R two is that so? Yeah, it's interesting. That yeah. dual sense, the dual sense is is, is a very interesting controller. Yeah, I'm really excited to see what all it could do. Mm-hmm. But um, since we were talking about how hot the Xbox can get, let's talk about these hot takes, boy. Do you have a hot take, Noah? Hmm. Do you have a hot take, Noah? Yeah, actually, I didn't write it down, mm-hmm. but my hot take is about my Miami Heat, of course, because you know I always talk about my Heat. Mm-hmm. My Miami Heat are going to trade this, not only trade this 20th pick, but we're going to beef up our starting five. Okay, I'm feeling more of a sense of we're probably going to pull a trigger on Drew Holiday, but I think... We're going to get Serge Ibaka. I really do feel like we can pull him away from, from there. Serge is getting up there in age. And with Toronto, is a very promising team. They just don't have that player to like, hey, we he's worth it. I think this guy here is good enough to take us to where we need to be. They don't have that guy. Pascal is a very good basketball player, but he's not that guy. Kyle Lowry definitely is not that guy. OJ Anobi could be that guy, but he's not. In Miami, we have a lot of those guys, and we have guys for the future, and Tyler Hero, and Bam. And if we don't trade him, Duncan. But more than likely, he's probably going to be traded. I see Kendrick Nunn probably going to New Orleans. We probably won't trade for Vic Oladipo. If Oladipo's not going to take that pay cut. I don't see him in a Heat uniform anymore. They've said that the Heat is actually backed up from Victor. So, you know, I don't really feel like he's going to be a Heat as much as he might be a Laker. Mm-hmm. And if, if, uh, if we manage to swing Drew Holiday – and take minimal damages, that Miami Heat team is a championship team, almost guaranteed. It's just barring injuries. I, it, honestly, the only thing for me is just seeing how this is going to play with such a quick turnaround. Like, off, like the free agency, the draft is next week, isn't it? Yes. The draft is next Wednesday. The free agency starts the week after that. So it's just like, and then 30 days after that, the NBA season starts again. So it, it's just where it's such a quick turnaround. I really don't know if these guys are even going to play. Like, are Jimmy and Bam going to even gonna play? LeBron and AD going to play? Kawhi and PG going to play? Like, that's such a quick turnaround. You just, just in the playoffs. <clears throat> so I expect either I expect to either see a lot of minutes cut to or they just going to play. And – I really don't advise that because when you don't give your body enough chance to heal, a long time to heal, that's that's where injuries tend to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, we never want our guys to get hurt. But I need to hear you defend yours because this is interesting. I believe that Brian Flores, the coach of the Miami Dolphins, will win coach of the year. And let me explain why. 
The Dolphins are on, a, a, I believe, a four-game win streak. Yes, they're on a four-game win streak. And the schedule is super easy up until they face the Chiefs. The Dolphins have the ability to win seven straight games. The Dolphins were not expected to compete this year. Last year and this year were expected to be the two developmental years and then next year, that was the year Dolphins were competing for a playoff spot. But things have progressed faster than they were supposed to. Very similar to the Heat of this year. Yeah. The Heat, the Dolphins are a lot better than expected. The defense is really good. The offense is getting up there. You know, they still need more consistency. But the offense is getting up there. And like I said, the schedule is super easy. The Dolphins could finish the season at. 10 and 6 or 11 and 5. And that's definitely good enough to make the playoffs. If that happens, Brian Flores is coach of the year. He has to be. He just took, even if the Dolphins don't win a playoff game, he was able to take the lowly Dolphins and put them in the playoffs. That's very similar to what Adam Gates did in 2016 with the Dolphins. When he took the lowly Dolphins, they went 10 and 6 and they made the playoffs. And got some yeah, I, I believe he was like maybe second or third in coach of the year voting. This Dolphins team is worse than that Dolphins team. And the Dolphins team this year can make the playoffs. If that happens, Ryan Flores is coach of the year. I mean, yeah, that's, that's solid. I mean, I don't really have any rebuttal. I can't think of why not. Cause I really like when I see the W's. When I'm seeing the W's against teams we're playing, I'm like, hmm. but I mean, Flores did learn on the Bel- learn on the Belichick. So I mean, like you, that's your mentor. Like you learn from him. And I don't think I really don't think Belichick wanted Flores to go. I think he actually wanted him to stay on his coaching staff. Correct? Yeah, he did. Yeah, like yeah, he 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 left. We got somebody that they really wanted. So I mean, you got a guy like like Flores coaching the team. He he's doing well. Like uh, it's a possibility, but I do feel like they would have to win a game at least for them to even probably consider it. So we'll see. Yeah, but that's it for today's show. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the Book Return Review on all social media platforms. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just look for at Boca Tribune. You can also follow the show on Instagram at the underscore timeout7. Follow me on my personal Twitter at Trayvon3. Noah? You can follow me at Who Builds Arts on Twitter, and you can follow me on Instagram at Builder Noah. Timeout airs every Thursday at 7 p.m. As always, this is the Avant Bros. Signing off. Happy birthday, Noah. Appreciate it.